back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today on the tabletop we have Roll Quest. Roll Quest is a light role playing game by Hercules Game Studios. It is for three to six players. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes to play and it's for ages eight and up. In the game Roll Quest, you're going to be playing as one of six different characters, whether it be the scary necromancer, or the curious innskeeper, or even the strong and smart and courageous warrior. Mm -hmm. You're going to be selecting a pawn along with, you're going to be getting treasure cards and, of course, these roll cards. And you're going to then select different locations, whether it be a town hall, a tavern, or even a market. Uh, as you're placing down the, your different pawns on locations, you're going to have to do some roll battle with your <laughs> opponents. You're going to be selecting a roll card and picking one of the different things. It could be something like strict, honest, or even extravagant, as well as potentially playing a curse on somebody as well, right? Ooh, yes, yeah, so you could, I curse you with the curse of rhyming. I don't know how <laughs> I'll do this. Perhaps I'll have to glue this in a state of Matt, Matt, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but nevertheless, so you're going to be doing that role, that role playing aspect. And uh, each of the different locations are going to give you different abilities uh, or different uh, possibilities, as well as your characters have different, different roles. Mm -hmm. You can choose to use them or not. It's a blank slate. And you're going to be also trying to uh, have your opponent, along with everybody else, guess what you are. Are you going to be extravagant, strict, or honest, or gambler, patriotic, or friendly, or even fanatical, secretive, or confused, flamboyant, emotional, or squeamish. And e each of these different cards here are going to be based on uh, a different color. There's three different colors. you got gray, bl uh, green, and red here. And each of the personality cards have a different color as well. If people are able to guess your specific color because you chose to act it out, you'll gain bonus points. The end of the game is when somebody has the most points. You're also going to have this... Uh, little Ooh. sand timer to timer. keep track of you doing the right thing. Make sure you don't go crazy with if your role If you need more <laughs> time, though, you can simply turn it over. <laughs> Nevertheless, though, let's go ahead and show you all the components in the game. Roll Quest. Here is the game Roll Quest, and all of the components here are what you get in the game. We have our role play deck of cards, as well as our treasure cards. Here's a little sneak of some of the role playing personality cards that you will be uh, attempting to play as, as well as some curse and treasure cards in here. Then we have, these are all the cards, then we have your character cards along with a token to represent each one. Uh, some of them have, they all have special abilities, knows the color of the word when guessing. That's a, oh, that's a very good one, the innkeeper. And then we have all of the tokens uh, these are the pro prototype versions of the tokens. Each goblin head is worth a certain amount of points here, so you can keep track of your role-playing score, as well as we also have this little timer here to keep track of the time. And last but not least, we have the location cards. Each of these has a special uh, sort of ability that sort of changes a little bit of the role-play that will happen it also sets the scene for your role play. Yeah, so it definitely sets the scene and it gives you a bonus before entering combat or role play. Uh, everybody's going to get two treasure cards and two roll cards to start out with and a character. Each of these characters have a different color. The color is going to represent the three different symbol color, the three different colors on each of the cards here. For instance, if I'm the necromancer, playing uh, as a gambler for my role is going to be very useful because if somebody guesses me, I gain an additional goblin head. In general, when you're role playing with each other, if somebody guesses you, you're going to gain two points. If somebody guesses you and they guess your correct color, you're going to gain an extra point. Also, let's say that I was playing as patriotic, and if somebody managed to guess gambler for some reason, I would still get the points anyway. Uh, you can choose to use these special abilities or not. This player gets to guess twice, and this person has the neutral personality traits count as good, but nevertheless, you can choose to or not to use them. When you start, maybe if you're starting with four players here, you have a certain amount of locations, and you're going to start placing down in turn order which what, what locations you want to go to. Players can choose to go on to a different location all by themselves, or they can go on to the location of the player. And then, of course, in, uh, in, in any 
order you want, you're going to do role playing and somebody's going to start. So if it was this player here and maybe, I don't know, this player over here, for instance, uh, they would each get to choose one of their role cards secretly and then they would do their roles. Uh, maybe the green guy is going to do squeamish and so he would role play as a squeamish uh, knight here. And then this town wizard would try and probably do something like the logical wizard. They'd be at a town hall going back and forth with each other. After they finish doing that based on the timer, each of the players are going to try and guess. First their opponents and then clockwise in order, guessing what that player is. After that happens, if nobody guesses, no, then no points are awarded. If somebody does, then that person and the role player will get the points. Otherwise, however, uh, the next uh, uh, the, uh, other role player is going to have the same thing happen to them. And of course, the guessing is going to happen in rounds. Finally, then, the players that don't have anybody can choose to pull somebody from the board onto their location, gain the bonus, and then have a little role fight as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you can choose to do a... Uh, if you want a treasure card on somebody, and most of these treasure cards are going to be curses, Kelly. Yes, that's right. So, for instance, we have Curse of Intoxication. What does that one do? So, the target player must act drunk in the next interaction. If somebody doesn't do that, by the way, they're going to lose two points, get stolen, right? So, for yes, instance, if you... from someone who notices, yeah. So, if somebody does notice them, um, then that person's going to be able to steal two points. Like, oh, you didn't use your curse, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and these are face up then, basically. Yes, everyone so that, knows the curse. So that way, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, you're in trouble, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's how curses work. And curses are going to be granted based on the treasure cards. And you get a treasure card when you successfully have somebody guess what you are. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the different locations on the board where people can pull around. After that, when everybody's done doing their, uh, their things, they're going to all go back. And then you're going to start over again playing the game. And that is the basic idea yeah. of the game Roll Quest. One, one thing to note is that the whoever is on the uh, location, a third player is going to be the one to kind of set the scene for whatever is going to happen and sort of give give the characters a little bit of motivation for their conversation and role play. Yeah, they'll be like, oh, you're at the town hall and you're talking about how the monsters have uh, come into the town and what you're going to do to deal with it. So it gives you a little set, a setting as yeah. well as um, a storyline that goes with it for each and every different pairing. So let's come up and talk about it as well as give you a little uh, little sampling of how it would go. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a little example of role playing. I'm going to be the necromancer and Kelly is going to be... The town wizard. And I've got my treasure cards in hand and my roll cards in hand. Uh, we also are both at the tavern and the tavern is going to have a special uh, ability of some sort that's going to be used on top of it. This is a prototype so that we're not going to be using the one specifically for this one. Nevertheless though, uh, we have the setting which is going to be the tavern and now we need the scene. So Grant... The cameraman, please give us the scene. The necromancer and the wizard meet in the tavern to discuss local adventurers destroying things and increasing the cost of goods in the town. Okay, so we're going to take this little timer here. We're going to look at our th our thing, and we're going to pick one of the different colors, of course. If you choose your own color, you can gain more bonus points, although it might be difficult for mine, it is. <laughs> uh, I've got my color, though. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. Although any of these cards can be guessed. Feel free to try and guess before before Grant does, okay? <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and start it up and flip it over. Okay, I'll start. The dang uh, crazy wizards and other um, spellcasters are uh, destroying our town, good wizard. Ah, oh, kids these days. I mean, just they just run rampant and do whatever they want and... I don't know what to do about them. I'm just, I love this uh, town. This town is I the wish... most important town in the whole world. No other towns matter more than this specific town. We, I love it. We just need to get out there and go fix all this stuff and, you know, just do our little... I got a little bit of wizard magic I could do. I don't know about you, but it's it's got to... Gotta... I'd be willing to disintegrate them into a million pieces in order to protect this specific homeland. I care more about this place than any random adventurer coming in to mess it up. Well, I don't know about that. We can exercise a little... Okay, maybe not patience, This but... land matters more than anything else. And then, of course, our time has run out. So now that is the end of that. Basically, what's going to happen is she would try and guess what what I was. And if she yeah. couldn't, then he would. So what what do you think I was? Uh... What do you think I was? <laughs> what do you guys think I was? I don't know. It's hard, it, too, because you're acting as You're well. acting and you're trying and to you're guess, trying right? And you're trying to actually see what the other person's doing. But we can you gain were, double points uh, if we can both guess each other. You are aggressive. Okay, no. Okay. What do you think? Patriotic. That's right. Patriotic. I was definitely patriotic. This <laughs> land is very important. Okay. Uh, so in that case, we would both gain points. I would gain, uh, I, I chose the gray area, so I didn't choose gambler. Gambling necromancer sounded a little difficult, so I went patriotic necromancer. Um, 
And so I get to guess twice looks on the necromancer. Yours was neutral traits count as good. Okay. Uh, so you were um, an old timer. No. Ah. Close. <laughs> he said, now synonyms count too, by the way. Yeah. So yeah. something very similar would count. Okay. Nostalgic. Uh, no, I was patronizing. Ah! <laughs> okay, and so that's how it would work, right? You score points, you come back, and you do more. Of course, if you wanted to be mean, you could start playing stuff like, uh, I don't know, the different curses that do different things, broken mirrors, making people squeak, and all that. And it can get kind of, I guess, embarrassing for certain people that, um... I don't know, haven't played a lot of role-playing games yeah, or not into or it. or not a lot. Like, so, acting-type games. Yeah, so, I mean... Basically, let's go into the review right now. What what did you think of of Royal Quest specifically? Uh, I think I wouldn't necessarily choose to play this game out of all of well, we have a lot, but uh, if someone wanted to play it, yeah, I'd play. But uh, for me, you know, having to get up and act like a certain character and try to listen to the other person at the same time, it's it's difficult. It's a skill, really. Uh, I think anyone who likes those kind of Dungeons and Dragons role playing games or want to get into them and want to practice in a in a sort of more low impact setting. This is a good game. It's a great game for uh, I think yeah, kids or like drama clubs. What do you think about if you didn't have to do the role playing but you had to do the setting and you would score points that way by doing Just, a good setting? Like you were like basically doing the writing. Setting. Right, right, for other two people. Well, would that yeah. be more fun for you? Yeah, cuz I like uh, those I like the story, like, yeah, like, coming up with a story. Because story this game can hard. get a little, like, embarrassing for you, a little, like, it's yeah. hard to do that kind of thing, kind right? Kind of like you're on the spot, and you have to think of things. Instantly. It's, <laughs> Instantly. it's a role-playing instant kind of, if you've done a lot of D&D. Yeah, a lot of improv. If, it's yeah. improv. So, so basically, D&D players are going to enjoy this yeah. game. Anybody who likes to get into themselves into a role, it's a lighter, quicker version of that. Mm -hmm. It gives you a little bit of a setting. It gets, gives you a little bit of a location. And then you go at each other. You can throw curses and whatnot. It's basically the yeah. interactive part of D&D without all the extra role playing that would be involved as far as going places and whatnot you're just at a place talking about a thing and having people try and guess what type of person you are yeah and it's really not that um high stakes really because you know the all the curses are kind of fun and there is a, a light-hearted atmosphere to it which is good so i think it is kind of that uh a way to uh and get more maybe more people involved in the, the sort in role playing yeah, I mean, the characters look good, the art's pretty cool, all of this is a prototype, so yeah. it's all fine and dandy. <laughs> I like role-playing to a certain extent. Uh, this one I was able, able to get into a little more than something like D&D. I have a harder time getting into RPG specifically because I don't like being on the spot as well, but this was kind of a nice nudge into it. If I wanted to do more, I would probably play something like this. Uh, like charades as well. This is kind of like yeah. the next yeah. step above that. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I would play this game again. I enjoy playing uh, small role-playing games, but I don't like the bigger ones. Ones. So this was kind of edging me just out of my comfort zone, but just enough to where I'd say, okay, I'm going to play it again. I want to see more stuff. I want to see more locations. I want to see more characters. Uh, there's mm -hmm. plenty of treasures and there's plenty of the uh, personalities and whatnot. Yeah. And um, I will say as well, a negative, the negative I found was less in the role-playing aspect, where I know that's more of a hindrance for you, mm -hmm. but it was more of trying to guess my opponent while I was talking as yeah. well. It's very difficult when I want to convey a message and then also figuring out what they're doing as Trying well. To listen to it's a lot they easier say. for the audience. <laughs> but at the same time, I can have a neutral opinion on it as well because they we can get points together, both back and forth, and yeah. we both guess each other. Yeah. It gives the audience a chance afterwards. It's probably easier for them to figure us out than otherwise. We still mm -hmm. can gain points even if we can't know what you are, what I am. So overall, I think this is a pretty solid, pretty light role playing game that most people that like D&D &D or just wanted to just jump in there softly, a party game. Uh, I wouldn't classify it as a family game, but like something that's more of like you're just getting like there's there's the the, the geek hood and you're just, you're just almost there, right? <laughs> almost. So overall, pretty good, pretty good, enjoyable. If you're interested in playing or checking out Roll Quest on the Kickstarter campaign, you can check it out in the description below. Pretty small, pretty simple game. That's what I got. <laughs>